The purpose of this lesson is to learn the basics of programming, to learn about procedural and object-oriented programming, to learn about the features of an object-oriented programming language, to learn about C-sharp programming, how to write a program in C-sharp, how to select identifiers to use within the programs, how to improve programs by adding comments in the system namespace, and then how to write and compile a C-sharp program using the command prompt. A computer program is nothing more than a set of instructions that tells the computer what to do. It is also called software. Whenever we're dealing with software, it's going to be presented to the computer in a system level language, which is represented by ones and zeros. Remember, your computer is nothing more than just simply a set of switches that we're turning on and off. When you make a program, what will actually happen is the whole thing gets converted to ones and zeros to tell the system what to do. To the system, a program looks nothing more than this simple thing here where you have a whole bunch of ones and zeros. It's nothing more than just instructions for turning switches on and off. We're going to use a high-level programming language. Now, high-level programming language means that we actually have syntax where we tell the system what to do, and behind the scenes, it will convert everything into the machine-level language that we need it to use to actually modify the, the memory locations and to tell the processor to do something. When we design our programs, we have to run it through a process called compiling, which actually converts it from our high-level programming language into machine language code. In C Sharp, this will automatically run when we're using the Visual Studio IDE, but when we use the command line, we actually have to manually do it. So we're going to learn how to use the command line compiler so we can compile our programs. Logic is the step-by-step -step process that actually we use to actually figure out how to solve a problem. And then once we have our logic design and we type in our syntax, then we go through a process called debugging. This is actually where we go through and find our syntax errors and we try to find our logic errors. One thing to be aware of is that when we are using Visual uh, Studio, it will debug our syntax errors. It will automatically tell us if we have a syntax error, but it will not tell us if we have a logic error. In our programs, we have these things called classes, and a class is going to be kind of like the blueprint for building a house. We want to be able to design an object, but we don't necessarily want to have to redesign the object every time we want to reuse it. So, like we have these classes of things called forms and a class of things called buttons. Now, if I take a button and I actually put it in my program and I give it a name, I am going to make it an instance of a class. I instantiate it. Therefore, it becomes an object, and now it gets its own attributes, and I can actually manipulate it. I can set values to it. I can cause it to do things. I can have its own methods. One of the things that we want to perform when we are using our programs is this process called encapsulation, which is just simply a manner of taking all of the code that is required to perform a task, putting it inside of its own method, and then just simply making it where all of its code and all of its variables and all of the objects that it uses are actually hidden from other portions of our program. We will allow a user to interact with our program through what's called an interface. That is going to be the actual program, whether it's the command line or a form that shows up. When we instantiate an object, every object that is a is designed from a class will be a child object of the class. And what happens is that if I have a, a parent object called button and I drag a button over into my program, then when I, when I actually give it some settings, it's going to inherit the basic characteristics of what a button should do. It should have uh, a rectangular shape, it should have a name, it should have a value. So I can actually take the button and I can modify it, but it inherits the basic characteristics that the original button had. I can also do things called polymorphism, which polymorphism is that I can take a method and I can cause it to act differently based on the context that's being used. So maybe I have a method that's supposed to accept two values and add those together, or maybe sometimes that method is supposed to take a name and a number and display them on the screen. So we will get to those later, but polymorphism is a simple way of taking one method and designing it in such a way that 
we depending on what's sent to it, it would actually do something different. The C Sharp programming language uh, was developed as part of the Visual Studio application. It has been part of it since 2012. It is not related to C++. However, it is modeled after it. So what they did is they took out some of the features of C++ that are fairly difficult. It's actually very similar to Java. If you've ever used Java before, C Sharp will use some of the same syntax as Java. C Sharp allows what is called namespace, which namespace is just simply giving a name to the memory location where all of my similarly used classes are going to be stored. So if I want to create an object like a form, I would give it a namespace and then all of the buttons and all of the text boxes and everything that is on that form would be stored in the same area in memory. When you're typing your program in C Sharp, uh, C Sharp does allow for what's called white space. It does not care if you use spaces or if you use tabs or if you put part of a command on one line and the second part of it on another line. So what we can do is we can actually make our code easier to read and easier to understand by simply making spaces and by indenting things. We have keywords, and a keyword is going to be a reserved set of identifiers. Now there are special ones that we cannot use, so anything that's already an object I can't use. I can't use a, a, a keyword called button, and I can't use one called main, and I can't, I can't make a text box called start, because those are all keywords that the system already uses. They are reserved, and we can't use them. There's also a special keyword called void, and what void does is void is designed that if I call a method, it's not going to return any values back to the method that called it. So what are the requirements? When we start designing our variables, there are certain requirements that C Sharp has. It has to begin with either an underscore, the at sign, or a letter. It can contain only letters, digits, underscores and the at sign, and it cannot be a reserved keyword. So you cannot use any special characters in it. Now this is a basic list. There's a longer list on Blackboard for all of the um, all of the reserved words, and then also the prefixes that you should use when you actually design your, uh, your programs and you create your variables. When you write your program, one thing that you should need to keep in mind is that you have to provide comments throughout your entire program. That way, if you need help with it, you can ask somebody else for help. They can understand what it's supposed to be doing. And also, if you ever need to go back and you need to modify the program, then those comments will remind you why you put certain lines of code into the program. There are some terms called commenting out, and what that is going to be is that if you're writing a program and part of it's not working, you can actually take a statement that, it, that currently exists, turn it into a comment, and therefore the system will ignore it. We have line comments, we have block comments, and then we also have XML documentation formats. So we'll play with those later. The line comment is going to be two forward slashes, and what this will do is it will tell the system, ignore whatever's on this line. But as soon as you press enter, the thing on the next line is actually going to be a piece of code, unless it has two forward slashes again. I can also do a block comment, and it's a forward slash and an asterisk, all the way to the other asterisk and forward slash. And what this will do is anything that is inside of here will be treated like a section of comments. When we actually start using the C Sharp IDE, it will actually turn our comments green. So you'll be able to tell that things are code and things are comment based on the color that they get, they get turned. I mentioned before that we have to convert whatever we type into the IDE or into the programming language, we have to convert that into machine level language. And what happens is I have what's called my source code. That's the stuff that I actually typed in, all the syntax that I actually created, and I'm going to convert that into an intermediate language. Now C Sharp has what's called a just-in-time or JIT compiler that will actually take whatever I type and it will convert it into a machine language executable. So what will happen is any programs that I design, I'm going to run it through the, uh, the C Sharp compiler. And when I run it through the compiler, the output of it is actually going to be an executable. So I will get a .exe file that I can actually run directly from a command line. 
Throughout the semester, you'll use both the command line and also the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. And the reason that we use them interchangeably is sometimes it's faster to make a program at the command prompt, especially if it's something that just has to calculate a value. And sometimes it's better to make a program in the IDE when I need a form. So what will happen is we will actually start using the IDE and we'll, we'll get some extra features like being able to create forms. But like I said, the ability of making the form sometimes make our, makes our program take longer to design and sometimes it's actually faster just to make the program in the command prompt. So the IDE looks like this. We will actually start using it next week. Uh, the, the command line, it's just that, it's a command line. The IDE has the ability to type a program in. It has an output window. It has the Solution Explorer, which the Solution Explorer actually just shows to us all of the resources that are used in our solution, which a solution is our project. And then each object has properties down here. All right, so we're going to start building some basic programs and compiling them. Before we actually build a program, I want to show you how to get to the compiler. It is installed as soon as you install Visual Studio. However, there is not an actual application that you can see on the start menu. It installs as a command line application. To get to the application, you actually have to go to the .NET Framework folder. That's actually where it's stored. And there's a program called CSC, which is the C Sharp Compiler. Now, if I press Enter here, I get an error message. And the reason I get the error message is because I'm not in the folder where the compiler is. So what I'm going to have to do is to change directory to that folder. All right, so the folder is located under C drive, under Windows, and so forth. And I don't necessarily want to have to do that every time. So on Blackboard, you will find a, a posting here for creating a path statement. Now, what this is, I'm going to copy this line, the entire line, and go back to my command line. And if I type the word path, it will show to me the path for all of the folders that are set up. Now, what a path statement is, is simply telling the, uh, the command line that if I type a command and I'm not in the folder where the program is located that I'm typing, try these other folders, see if it's in any of those. So what I want to do is I want to add to this path statement. So what I could do is I could just type the word path and then a space and then whatever the folder is. But if I do that, it'll wipe out the path statement for everything else. And I don't want to do that either. So when I issue this path statement, I'm telling it, um, change the path to whatever the path currently is and semicolon and then add this to it. And system root is going to be your C drive, uh, Windows, and then Microsoft.net framework and so forth. So what I'm doing is I'm telling it to add this to the end of the path statement. So if I look at my path statement now, you will see that I now have C colon backslash Windows backslash and then so forth. All right, so now if I type CSC, now I get the C Sharp compiler. All right, the problem is if I exit out of this and I open up a command prompt again, type in CSC, oop, same thing. All right, the reason for it is, is that the C Sharp, I'm sorry, the path statement is only for that one instance of the command prompt. So I would have to paste this again, press enter, now CSC is available. All right, what I want to do is I want to show you a shortcut. Instead of doing this, what I'm going to do instead is to copy the second line down here, and I'm going to create a new shortcut on my desktop. Now, essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a shortcut that points to the command prompt, but by pasting this in here, I'm telling it to issue this command, which is going to set the path equal to all of this. And so what it will do is it will issue the path It'll issue the path statement for me every time I run it. So I'm going to call it CMD with path. And now I have a shortcut. So now if I run this and I do CSC, there we go. So I'm actually there. I don't have to type in my path statement. Now the catch is that notice I am defaulting to the C colon backslash Windows folder. And I don't necessarily want it to be in that folder. I want it to be in whatever folder I'm currently in. So I want this. I want my path statement here to be the path statement where the shortcut is. So that way I can create my programs here on the desktop or whatever folder that I'm in. And then when I run it, I don't have to try to remember where my file is for the C-sharp compiler. 
To do this, I'm going to modify this. I'm going to right click on it, go to properties. And notice it says start in Win directory. This is the system, uh, system environment variable for where the Windows directory is. I'm going to change this to percent CD percent for current directory. And then when I push OK, now when I run this, you'll see that my, my path is here. And the path where I'm actually working is my desktop. So I will actually find any, any files that I put on the desktop. I'm already there in that folder. Now, with that said, for these exercises, I am doing this all on my desktop just so you can see what's going on. I would strongly suggest that you make a folder somewhere that is specifically for your C Sharp programs. That way you can back up that folder. Um, maybe it's on a flash drive or something like that, but make sure that you have it in a folder where you can actually find all of your programs because you're going to be responsible for maintaining all of them. We're going to start building some programs and to do this all I'm going to do is right click on my desktop, new, and then text document. Now I want it to be a text document because it has the right encoding format, but I don't want it to be a .txt file. When you create a new file, if you don't see the .txt extension, you're going, to have, <clears throat> pardon, you're going to have to make a change so that you can see the extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new, a new program. It's a C-sharp program, so it's going to be hello.cs, and that designates that this is a C-sharp program. Now, it's going to ask me if, if I want to change the extension. Yes. And now, if yours didn't do that, you're going to have to make a change to Windows. So what I'm going to do is open up the libraries. Go to View, and then go to Change Folder and Search Options. Go to the View tab, and uncheck this one here that says Hide Extensions for Known File Types. What this will do is when you uncheck it, it will make it where you can actually see the extension for the files, and then you can change the extension. If, if you don't have that enabled, what you would actually end up with here would be hello.cs.txt, and you wouldn't know it because it doesn't show the extension. So it, I'm, I'm going to come here to my command prompt, and if I do directory hello.cs, you'll see that that file is actually here, and it's just hello.cs. There's no .txt at the end of it. All right, so that is my file, and to actually modify this, I'm going to use Notepad++. Now, by default on your computer, it will automatically use Notepad when I try to edit these, and that's not what I want to do. I want to use Notepad++. So if you don't have Notepad++ Notepad++ installed, please download it, install it on your computer, and then there is another video that is listed on how to uh, how to configure Notepad++ for using with C Sharp. All right, so I want to make my first program, and to do that, I'm simply going to open this with Notepad++. Now mine is already configured to open with it. If yours isn't, then all you have to do is right-click on it and then edit with Notepad++ will be enabled. All right, so what I want to do is I want to type my very basic program. And the very basic program is always going to start off with a class statement. Now, the class statement is simply stating to the system that the following items belong to this particular class. And what is the class? It's just a collection of objects. All right, so my objects here are simply going to be a main method. So what I'm going to do is my class is going to be the name of my program. So it's going to be hello world. And then open curly brackets. And for some reason, indented. OK, and then a couple lines down, I close it. So that's my class statement. So what we're saying is that we're making a class called hello world. And then we open and close the, the brackets, which means that anything inside of those brackets belongs to this class. All right, so then I'm going to indent, so I'm tabbing over, static void main. Every program is going to have a main method. Now, it's static, which means it doesn't depend on anything else. It is void, which means it doesn't return anything back to whoever calls it. And main just simply means this is my entry point for the program. Every program is going to have a main method. That's the entry point for it. Okay, so push enter a couple times and close my curly brackets. And now what I have is I have a class called hello world that contains a static main method. And then my code actually will go into here. All right, so my code is going to be that I want it to write something out to the screen. 
And I wanted to write it out into the command prompt. This is a, a command line application, called, also called a console app. And so what I want to do is I want to write a line of code to the console, which is a member of our system. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to type system. And everything that we do in C Sharp is going to be in a parent-child relationship. So at our topmost level, I want to modify the system somehow. I want to modify a member of the system, which is called the console. And I want to write something to a line. So I'm going to say dot write line. Okay, and then in parentheses, what do I want it to have, or what do I want it to write to the screen? And then every line of code actually ends with a semicolon. Every single line ends with a semicolon. All right, so I'm going to modify the system. I'm going to write something to the console, and I want to write a line of code out. Well, what do I want to write? I want to write hello world. Now, hello world is text, so it's going to go inside of a double quotes. And we'll say hello world like this. And so what we're telling it is write a line of code to the console, which is a member of the system. And that line of code is going to be hello world. It is text, so it goes inside of double, uh, double quotes. And then our line of code ends in a semicolon. That is our absolute basic program. Every program will have at least a class and at least a static main method. All right, so I want to run this program. And to run it, I have to compile it. So I'm going to save this. And to compile it, what I am going to do is I'm going to type CSC for the C Sharp compiler. And then what is the name of the program? What was hello.cs? So the .cs is my source code. I'm telling the compiler to compile my source code, turn it into assembly language. And when I press enter, what you'll notice is that I get an executable. Now my executable over here, if I had any errors, I wouldn't get the executable. I'd actually get error messages down here. I didn't get any errors, so that's good. Uh, I want to run this. Okay, so I'm going to type in hello.exe, press enter, and I get hello world. All right, that's good. But I'm going to double click on this and watch what happens. So double click. Oop, it popped up and disappeared. Let's try it again. Oh, okay, I can't get it to stay up on the screen. So I want to show you how to get this thing to stay on the screen so you can see it. So while you're making these console applications, I want you to add two additional lines of code. I'm going to show you one at a time. Okay, the first one is system.console.readLine. Now what this does is this tells the system to wait for you to input some amount of text. It's waiting for you to push enter. So essentially this would be used to read in information like if I asked a question I wanted you to answer it. I'd wait for you to answer it and then when you press enter then we read that content in. But in this case what I'm doing is I'm using it to trick the system to simply wait before it does anything else. Alright so I'm going to save it and I'm going to push the up arrow so I can get back to the C sharp compiler. Compile it. Okay now when I double click on this now it stays up on the screen and it's waiting for me to push enter. So press enter. All right, so if I were to do hello.exe in my command prompt, I get the same thing. It's waiting for me to press enter. Okay, and if you notice, it just simply puts the line of code next. And I may not necessarily want it to do that. I want it to clear the screen first. All right, so to clear the screen, I'm going to add a line of code at the beginning. Okay, so it's system dot console dot clear. All right, so I want to clear the console, which is a member of the system. Then I want to write a line of code at, which is hello world, to the console, which is a member of system. And then after it writes that, I want it to read in a line of text, wait for you to press enter, in the console, which is a member of system. All right, so let's try this. So I'm going to compile it again, and I'm just using the up and down arrows. I don't have to retype it once I've already typed it. It'll save a lot of time if you use the arrows. All right, compile it. It compiled, and now when I run it, the screen cleared, and then it wrote the line of text. It's waiting for me to press enter. I press enter, go back to the prompt. If I run it again, same thing. It clears the screen. So now I get a nice, clean screen when I run my program. Whatever text is to be displayed on the screen gets written, 
and then it simply waits for input. And the reason for waiting for input is that if somebody double clicks on it, then it waits. So that is our basic program. Every basic program should have a class, which is the name of your program, and it should have a main method, and then your code goes inside of it. I want you, for every program that you make right now that is a console app, to clear the console, and the very last thing is going to be to reline, so that way if, if I double click on it, it doesn't disappear. All right, so I want to modify this a little bit, and what I want to do is I want to write out three lines of code. So before I do that, what I'm going to do is delete this part of the line. And in parentheses, I'm going to put line one. And I want it to write three lines of code. So system.console. And if you notice in uh, Notepad++, because I have typed these things before, it understands what I'm trying to type. And it will show them to, to me down here, and I can actually select them. Now, it will only do this if I have saved this previously as a .cs file. If I had saved it as a regular text document, then Notepad++ would just treat it like text. But because it's a .cs and because uh, Notepad++ understands uh, syntax logic, it actually will prompt me for things that it understands. So line 2, system.console.write, line 3. Okay, so now I have three lines of text. So I believe I'm writing out line one, I'm writing line two, writing line three. Okay, save it. Now I want to show you the difference between a write and a write line. So I'm going to go back up to CSC to compile it again. I compiled it. And then when I run it, I get line one, line two, line three, and they all show up on one line. And the reason for it is, is because I used write instead of write line. Write will just simply write out on the same line. It won't actually make a carriage return. If I change these to write line, then what it will do is it will place a carriage return after it displays this out on the screen. Okay, so save it. Compile it again. Oops. Compile it again. Run it. And now I get three separate lines. So be aware there are some times that you're going to want to do a write, which just simply puts things out on one line, and then you, you're going to also want to do a write line, which will put it on separate lines. Okay, so I don't want to have to type system every time here. So what I can do is before my class statement, I can tell the system, or the, the compiler, that I want to use system. So essentially I'm telling it that Anytime I type something that relies on the system, I don't want to have to type system. I want to just automatically assume it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the word using. This is a lowercase using, and then system, which is capital S. And by doing this, now what I can do is I can come down here, and anywhere I have system, oops, it's supposed to be indented. Um, anywhere I see system, I can get rid of it down here. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm telling it using the system, which means any of these commands that rely on system will automatically use it. So what will happen is when I compile it, it knows that console is a member of system, therefore I don't have to actually type system out. So this is a shortcut. All right, so I'm going to run this again. Actually, I'm going to compile it. Okay, so actually saying that I have a semicolon expected. Oh, and by the way, when I get an error, it does show you which line it's on. It is on line 1, character 13. So if I look at line 1 and click over here, I will see I'm at uh, column 13. That's character 13. So save this. Compile it. And then run it. Get the exact same thing that I had before, but now what I have is I didn't have to type out system.console because I'm using it. So it's a shortcut for it. I don't have to use it. Now this is building a console application using the command line compiler. That's what I actually want you to do for now. But I am going to show you also how to build it using the, um, the Visual Studio IDE. So I'm going to exit out of this. I can exit out of this. And I want to go to the Visual Studio application. Now on your computer, you may not find it when you look in the start menu. And if, especially if you have Windows 8 or Windows 10, it'll be hidden. 
It's not called Visual Studio. It's not called C Sharp. It's called VS Express. So I'm going to go to Start and type VS. And here's my VS Express for desktop. Okay, so this is the Visual Studio IDE. And what I want to do is I want to build a new project. So I'm going to click New Project. And when I build a new project, you'll notice over here on the side I have different programming languages available to me. Make sure you have Visual C Sharp available or selected. And the reason for this is, is if you select Visual Basic, it will allow you to build your forms. It will allow you to do all of the hard work of getting everything laid out the way that you want it. But when you start typing your commands, the commands will be wrong. It saves you a lot of time to check up front. All right, so I'm doing a Visual C Sharp console application. And what I want to do is I want to give it a name. So my name here is going to be three lines. And you'll notice that what it does is it creates a name here, and it also creates it what they call a solution name. And over here on the side, it says Create Directory for Solution. What it will do is automatically, under my Documents folder, under Visual Studio 2012 Projects, it will actually create a project folder for me with the name of this project. So I'm going to click OK. And what it will do is it will automatically configure my using statements. And you'll notice I get some extra ones. Um, so we're using system, we're using system.collections.generic, and so forth. Now link is something we'll get to at the end of the semester. But what it's done now is it modified this just a little bit. I now have a class statement, which is our program, and it will automatically be program. But it created a namespace. Now the namespace is the place in memory where it will store all of the members of this program. So all of our methods, all of our variables, everything is going to be placed in a section of memory based on the name three line. Okay, so when I come down here, I want to put my code after the static void main, so I'm going to press enter between these two curly brackets, and this is where all of my code is going to go. All right, so just like I did before, I'm going to put in console.clear, so console, and what you'll notice is as I start typing, I have this thing pop up down here at the bottom. This is called IntelliSense. Now what IntelliSense does is it will automatically pop up with the things that are available to me based on what I'm typing. So I type in console dot and here are all of the uh, attributes of console that are available. So I want to do console dot right line and it starts narrowing it down. I can just press enter. Okay, so now I'm going to do line one. Console dot right line. Line two and console dot right line line three okay so just like we did with our other console app what I want you to do is to add the console dot clear and at the end I want you to put in the console dot read line so that way it clears the console and it will actually wait for you to press enter so what I'm doing is I'm just simply typing the code and because it's using system, I didn't have to type system.console.clear. Now I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to delete this line. Okay, and by deleting that line, if I come down here and I type console, notice console doesn't exist now. I can't get to it. The reason for it is, is because I deleted that line, it immediately knows that console here doesn't belong to anything. So as soon as I put console, or I'm sorry, using system back in, now all these consoles actually have a context, and I can immediately start typing console because it knows we're using this collection here called uh, called system. All right, so here's my program. I want to run it. All right, so in the command line version, I have to compile it first, and then after I compile it, then I have to run it. Well, in here, I can actually just come up and click the start button. And what the start button will do is it will automatically compile it. There's what's called a just-in-time uh, compiler. So it will actually compile the program and run it for me. And it actually stores it in a folder. So when I click start, I actually get my program running because it already compiles it and everything for me. So I click start. It compiled it. It tells me at the bottom if there are any errors. I didn't get any errors, so it actually ran it. It cleared the console, uh, printed the three lines of text. And it's waiting for me to press enter. So when I press enter, now it finishes running. So down here at the bottom, if I had any errors, those errors would show here. Because I didn't get any errors, I didn't, I didn't get any down here. All right, so what did it just do? Behind the scenes, it actually created a folder under 
uh, documents under Visual Studio 2012 and then projects and I have a folder here called three line alright so what are you going to be submitting alright so what you're going to do is you're going to be submitting these programs to Blackboard and this entire folder is the entire solution so all of the resources that were just created so when I open this up I see a three line dot SLN that's our solution file and inside of here I will see our actual program and if I open this up with notepad plus plus that's the program of what I actually just typed in alright if I go to the bin debug folder here's our executable this is what the system actually compiled for so if I run this I actually will see the program run these are all of the other resources that were created out of it so when I compile it from the command line I have my .cs file and a .exe and that's it but when I build it in the IDE I get all these other files that are that are also created okay so whenever I build a program I want to make sure that other people can install it. Well, C Sharp actually has the ability to build it, and you can publish an application. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an installer for my program so that somebody else can install it. So I'm going to click Publish 3-Line, and it wants to know where to publish it. it. We're just going to leave that alone. It's going to go in the Publish folder. So Next. It wants to know how people are going to install it. So if somebody were going to install this from my website, I could click Website and specify the URL. In this case, I'm just going to say from CD or DVD ROM. So next. If I build an application that does automatic updates, I can actually set the system up where it will automatically check to see if there are updates, and it will automatically download them whenever it finds them. In this case, it's not going to check for updates. So next, and then finish. Okay, so it's going through. It just published it. And what it did is inside of my three-line folder, it created a new folder called Publish. And here's the actual installer for it. So I can, I can actually install this program. It would show up and add remove programs, and I didn't have to build the installer. It did the whole thing for me. So now the catch is if I run this, it installs it. I have to go back to uninstall a program and actually remove it. But what I want you to do is I want you to run your program. So you start it, let it compile it. So there should be a bin, debug, and an executable in here. And then I want you to publish it, which means there should be a publish folder. So the question is, what are you going to submit to Blackboard? What you're going to do is you're going to go all the way back up here to this projects folder, where you see all your different projects. I want you to right click on it, send it to a compressed folder, and the file name here is going to be whatever the assignment is, and then this is what you actually would submit to Blackboard you're going to submit this .zip file. Now for the console application, the console application that I created here on the desktop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my .cs and my .exe file, drag a box around them, and then these two I'm going to send them to a compressed folder, and it's going to be named whatever it is, and this is what I would submit. So if it is a command line one, one that you had to run CSC to compile, you're going to simply give me the CS and the .exe in a zip file. If it is an IDE file, you're going to zip up the entire folder, the entire folder, and this .zip is what I should get. So when I open up this .zip, what I should see is the folder with your program. Inside of there, I should see your solution file. Inside of three line here, I should find the bin debug so I should be able to find your executable and I should also find your published folder that should all be in there to receive credit if it's not there you will not receive credit for it alright so what is due before class next week is going to be your hello.zip file the one from the uh, CSC the one that contains the .cs and the .exe and then also the zip file that contains the folders from the IDE. So I want you to recreate the uh, Hello World application from the command line using CSC, and I want you to create the three line application using the Visual Studio IDE and submit both of those zip files. So these two zip files right here are what you have to submit before class on Tuesday. If you have any questions, please let me know, and good luck.